Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for being here on this blustery November day. Uh, the weather certainly seems to be bouncing around from sunny and nice to windy and cold and a little snow here and there. But um, thank you all for uh, making the uh, effort to be here. Uh, my name is Frank Chalet uh, with the Parkinson's Resource Center. And on behalf of the Board of Directors, I'd like to thank everyone and our hosts and our sponsors uh, for making telehealth possible today. In particular, I'd like to thank Northwest Telehealth for producing today's program, uh, especially Tim Brown over there in the corner who's doing all the work. Uh, our hosts, St. Luke's Rehab Center, uh, for providing the facility today uh, and every month. And in particular, also our sponsors, our partners in Seattle, Northwest Parkinson's, uh, Albertsons, for their ongoing financial support that makes this possible and all the efforts of our PRC Board of Directors. Um, I'd also like to thank uh, all of our remote sites and everybody out there for assisting us and uh, for making this possible as well. Last but not least, I'd like to always thank our volunteers uh, for making this happen. Uh, Jackie Yule's with us today, our volunteer coordinator, master, whatever. <laughs> She's shaking her head. She knows it's true. Uh, but thank you, Jackie, and all the volunteers for uh, helping us. As always, uh, as is protocol, uh, we'll hold questions till the end. And I'd ask that each of the sites uh, do mute their microphones at this point in time uh, so we can have the benefit of hearing each and every word that our speaker is going to provide us today. And again, as a reminder at the end when we do uh, question and answer, when I call each site, I want to ask you for how many in attendance uh, so we can get a record of that. Okay, so uh, today I'm real pleased to announce our speaker. Our speaker today is Becky Tiller from, from Tiller Care, uh, Care Strategies. Uh, Becky is a geriatric care manager, and she's going to talk about the role of case management or case managers uh, in the care of Parkinson's patients, and she's also going to touch on safety issues and uh, the choice and making choices of assisting, assisted living facilities and other uh, similar types of things when the timing is right for that. And before I have Becky come up, I want to uh, announce that she gets a gold star today because she was by far the earliest to arrive on site. I scared her for a moment when I told her we were starting at 3 uh, instead of 2. But uh, anyway, um, please join me in welcoming Becky Tiller. Thanks, Frank. Thank you. And that's probably the only time I'll ever be early. <laughs> My nurse is here with me, and she, she's laughing because she knows that's true. Well, thank you very much. It's, a, it's an honor, actually, to come and speak with you about what it is that I do um, on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, I own a, an adult and geriatric care management company. I've owned it for seven years now. It's called Tiller Care Strategies, as Frank said. But I've been in this field for 26 years and doing some various form of social work, um, or I'm also a licensed mental health counselor, so I'm doing counseling as well. Um, what I, I saw a need out there, and that need was to fill this niche for people that want to have services in the home, that need some guidance when it comes to when is it time to make that decision to find placement, the, the very difficult decisions around safety, things that impact our lives. So I developed a team. I have a nurse, Diane Antonetti, here in the audience with me, and I have a social worker, and then, I, again, I'm a licensed mental health counselor. So when we go out and we do work in the field, we like, like to do it in the home because we want to see the person in, in their own environment. And we also like to look at safety issues. You know, are there scatter rugs that need to be pulled up? Are there, you know, making recommendations when we go into the home, if there's some things that we can do to make it a safer environment for that individual to stay there. But sometimes people are looking for alternatives. They're, they're looking for options, um, maybe an adult family home or assisted living or something like that, and they don't know who to turn to. They don't know which ones are good. I mean, there's a lot of beautiful facilities out there. Spokane is full of beautiful facilities, but it's not necessarily the one that provides the best care. So who do you trust? Who do you trust in the, when the agency's coming out? Which one do you, do you put your trust in? Because there's um, a multitude of home care agencies that are all vying for your business. So when we go out to do an assessment, we look at, it's a multifaceted, um, we look at all the different functions of a person's um, being as far as how they're doing from an emotional standpoint, how are they doing cognitively, how are they doing from a functional standpoint with their activities of daily living. 
Medications is a big one. It's a huge, huge issue, and especially with this population. We also look at diagnosis. We look at spiritual needs and we look at social needs. So we, you know, everything, if one part of that is out of balance, then it impacts the rest of that person. And so we recognize that. So when we go in and do an assessment, we'll make recommendations based on what's, what, what could currently be, be put into place, but we also like to look at maybe something down the road. What, what is going to need to take place down the road, especially if safety issues are a concern, okay? So we'll put together a plan and, and help people to, the, the individual is our client. Okay, the individual, maybe, maybe they have Parkinson's disease, maybe they have dementia, maybe they have some chronic mental health issues, uh, maybe very multi multiple health issues, uh, very frail, those kinds of things. And so th these are the things that we look at when we go out to do um, an assessment. But first and foremost, we are advocates. Okay, we're advocates for that individual. And sometimes that is a conflict with the family. And sometimes we have to say the things that, that people don't want to hear because we are coming in as an objective third party. And, and sometimes that is helpful for our family members because we are, again, advocating for the safety and the health, be health and well-being of that individual, but it sometimes isn't the most popular thing that they want to hear when we, we give out choices. So sometimes that's, that's very difficult. So what we'll try to do is identify goals. You know, what, what is the, what's the goal of that individual, our client? What is that goal? Is it to stay at home? Is it to find a good assisted living facility, adult family home? Um, so it varies. So when, when we go out, we do the comprehensive assessment, assessment, and we look at all the different components of that individual and then make that goal on that. But again, starting with what can be put into place immediately and then what, what we need to look at down the road a piece. And first and foremost, it needs to be a safe plan of care. I can't sign off, I can't in ethically sign off on a, on a on unsafe plan of care. So, but, but another big function of a geriatric care manager is, and, and I'll use the term care manager and case manager interchangeably. Care manager is kind of a newer, new, excuse me, newer term. So, you know, we know the resources in the community. And I recognize that we're looking at a lot of different, you know, cities, uh, towns out there that might not have the resources that Spokane has, but there's probably some variation that they do have. So some of the re resources that we might look at for somebody, especially maybe with somebody with Parkinson's disease, could they benefit from an adult day health program, if anyone's familiar with that? A day program where somebody goes into the, the program, they get rehab services, there's nursing services, and there's social workers and rec therapists that have an activity throughout the day structured activities throughout the day and and it gives that person a, some social a social outlet as well as well as also looking at their their physical and mental health well-being so that that maybe that's something that they could look at or does somebody need transportation you know transportation is a huge issue um, how can how can we arrange transportation for somebody and and again it's going to vary with what your community offers um, could somebody stay in the home if they had their medication delivered and blister packed? If, it's, if that's all that it is um, that is lacking in their life, you know, it can be something like that that's put into place. Or automatic dispensers, medication dispensers that will um, <coughs> automatically open up, the, do the correct dose comes out, and it beeps until that person takes the medication, and then it closes. And that can be preloaded for even up to a month. Okay, so there's a lot of different kinds of things out there that, that we know about. Does that person need some help with their with their finances? Just managing the checkbook, paying the bills. All right, there are people that come out to the home to do those kinds of things. All right, because we recognize that a lot of folks, especially that have Parkinson's, aren't able to drive and get around as they wish they had. And so, um, we can arrange transportation, whether it's through you know a, a primary provider like what we have with STA, or maybe a volunteer provider like a church or what we have here in Spokane, Care Cars, through Spokane Mental Health. So there's a, a variety of different things that can help. Um, meal preparation is a huge one as well. Um, you know, if people aren't getting proper nutrition, we see their health decline very, very rapidly, and they don't even really recognize it. It's usually people on the outside that see how much it's impacting their health. So the, the other part of that is maybe having an in-home service come in like a, a homemaker services where they do laundry, housekeeping. Um, they can provide transportation, most of the agencies. Uh, they can do the cooking. 
for someone. And they can, they can monitor medications. They can't administer, but they can monitor uh, medications to make sure that they're being taken correctly. There's even podiatrists that can come in or podiatry services that can come in and provide foot care, okay? Oral, uh, dental, dental hygienists and um, denturists can make home visits. Um, and, and, and then I'm, not, I'm speaking a lot to the, to the in-home care, but there's a lot of resources out there that if you have to go in, who do you, again, put your trust in? Is there somebody who specializes in your needs? So it, it's really important to try to find out what's best going to work for, for that individual. Um, you know, even in-home hairstylists, um, and that might not be important to the fellas in this room, but it is important to the ladies. So, you know, they can do the hair care and, and nails and that sort of thing. All right. But then there's also those really vital services that we have out there, um, the rehab services. We are in St. Luke's Rehab Institute. We know how important rehab is to this population. If, if there's been multiple falls, do we need to get a physical therapist out there to do some, some work with maybe endurance, strength, balance, you know, to do fall prevention? Maybe, they, maybe occupational therapy needs to come in and, and help out with some of the more functional tasks of the day that, that people run into. Um, speech pathology as well. Okay, so you probably know better than I do how vital those services are to, to maintaining somebody in their own home if that's where they want to be. And they can also get these services in assisted living or an adult family home as well. All right, so <clears throat> there's also other vital services such as, um, do you have your power of attorney? Do you have a, your living will set up? Um, do, you know, who, who's going to make those decisions for you if you are unable to make those decisions? If you are unable to handle your finances because you're incapacitated in the hospital sometime, somewhere, who's going to make those decisions? So connecting up with a good, we usually connect people up with elder law attorneys, but it really is very important that whoever you have as, a, as a, an attorney knows the state Medicaid laws because um, they, it's going to be key in maintaining your, your estate. Okay. So they can help you with the state planning as well. Um, the other thing, you know, one of the other things, and I don't know how many of you are connected up with a personal emergency response system, like some of the more common ones, Lifeline, Response Link, and some of those different things. Okay, we call them PERS systems. All right. There are also, there, there's a multitude of things that are coming up in right now, the internet monitoring, a couple of them that I've seen demonstrations on. Be close and grand care, and they can they can monitor when somebody's left a room. They can monitor if the heat is too low. They can monitor uh, blood sugars. They can monitor uh, blood levels for INR. They can um, they can check somebody's weight, um, and and then it can be there can actually be audio or visual. Um, monitoring that goes on. Not everybody really wants to have that, but they can tell when somebody, they can, they can have a sen sensor set up that will actually tell when somebody has, has got, gotten out of a chair and then moved to a different room. All right. So there's a lot of different things that can be done, and I, I think we're going to see a lot more of that coming. Those are just a couple of them that I've watched demonstrations on. Um, also, another huge industry that's starting to really come uh, on board is home modification. Um, we have people who specialize in going out to a person's home to make sure that, they, that their doors are wide enough for a wheelchair or a scooter, that the, that the uh, cabinets are low enough, that they have the grab bars, they have the, the um, um, I'm, I'm blanking on uh, ramps. <laughs> they have ramps and, and uh, all those different kinds of things. And it's just, it's a, it's, it's a huge, huge issue. They also even have um, transfer system that can be set up into the ceiling where somebody, rather than having to use a Hoyer lift, they can use these transfer systems that, that are connected up in the ceiling. It's, it's, it's amazing what they're coming up with, the, the technology and adaptive equipment. So. So these are the kinds of things that, that a care manager can, can connect you up with if you need to have some of these services. Um, so how much does it cost? All right. Now, there are, I do want to say that there are some public uh, care managers or case managers that you will find through um, the Area Agency on Aging, and there's an Area Agency on Aging in every state in our union. Okay, so everyone has an Area Agency on Aging. Now, the services that they offer are going to be, be a little different depending on what community you are in. But 
they will pay for it's federal money monies that's matched up with state monies and they will pay for services to come in the home if you fit the criteria and the criteria has to be financial and level of functioning at least in the state of washington and i believe most of the states that we're broadcasting out to are probably pretty much the same and so that's another another area where an, an elder law attorney would be helpful as well in trying to to help people with applications and that sort of thing that's something we do as well. We help people apply for Medicaid assistance. You know, planning for that. What do you What do you need to do in order to to uh, be eligible for me Medicaid? As you all know, it doesn't take very long in a skilled nursing facility or an assisted living facility to blow through your savings. So, if there's some way that we can try to preserve those assets as long as possible, that's very key. Um, so, but anyway, there there are there are public case managers, and then. And those are generally the ones that come in after somebody's been on state assistance. But those of us who are in the private sector, you'll see a range of anywhere from 80 to maybe $130 an hour. It really depends on um, the area that, that, that you're coming from. I mean, the west side's a little bit more expensive than what we are, et cetera. So, um, but a couple of well-timed hours with a care manager can save you a lot of headaches. Um, it can save you money, and it can save you a lot of time. Right, as, as family members and as the people, that book, those of you who have the Parkinson's. Um, the other thing that care managers can help out with is filing for veterans benefits and also long-term care policies. I mean, if any of you have long-term care policies and you've tried to file a claim, more often than not, it's been denied. All right, so what we do is we bust through all the stuff and, and don't accept that denial um, until we absolutely have to. So more often than not, we can get um, people their long-term care benefits. I mean, you've been paying on the, the policy, you should be able to uh, redeem that, the uh, services that come with that, that policy. The length of involvement of a care manager can be made. I have some people who come in and talk with me for an hour or two, and then sometimes we have ongoing involvement. So it really varies with what the need is of the individual. Okay. Um, now, how do you find a good one? You can go through the AAA, the, the Area Agency on Aging. They usually do have case managers, um, a list of case managers that are private. But you can also Google it. You can search it. One of the things that I would um, recommend is that, that you make sure that they do not accept referral fees. Because if a, a facility is paying a care manager to refer to them, then they are not going to be objective. They are not going to have your um, best interest at heart. Okay, so that would be a question to ask. That'd be a question to ask. Also, I mean, ask ask if they you could see a list of referrals, or references. I mean, you know, a reference. If somebody bristles about get, you asking them for references, you don't want to work with them, All right? Um, so, and the, and then check with your neurologist or your primary care physician. They may know of some geriatric care managers and elder law attorneys. Um, a lot of folks talk to me um, as a result of, of being referred from an elder law attorney, okay, and neurologists and, uh, you know, physicians. So so that that's just a little bit on the, the role of a case manager. Now, one of the things I would say that's probably the biggest issue that we run into with um, my business is safety. That's probably the largest thing. I mean, the biggest, biggest issue that is going to send somebody into a skilled nursing facility or an assisted living or an adult family home. Okay, when there are safety concerns. And it's not always a pleasant topic to talk about. But with this population, we have to talk about fall prevention. Okay, if there's been a multiple falls, then we have to pay attention to that. What is the reason for the falls, and is it something that we can work on to make sure that there's safety in the home? Um, can we set up a PERS system, the Personal Emergency Response System? Because they actually have systems now that can, that if you fall, you and you're knocked out, it can actually summon help without you having to even push a button. All right, so there's, a, there's those types of things that can be set into place. And again, the virtual monitoring through the internet. Um, but one of the things that we always ask is, would this person know what to do in the event of an emergency? Okay, that is a huge issue. Do they know what to do? Okay, would they make the right call? I've heard people say, well, I'll just pick up the phone and say help, okay? That doesn't quite work. Um, or, or they don't know 911. That's one of the things that I ask on a mental status exam. Who would you call in the event of an emergency? And if they can't tell me 911, that tells me a lot. Okay. Or I'll call my daughter. Well, what's your daughter's phone number? Well, I don't know, but I have it written down here somewhere. Okay. Um, memory 
issues some some folks with Parkinson's end up with memory problems and it can be a huge issue especially when taking medications remembering you know getting proper nutrition um, getting your activities of daily living completed uh, so memory is a huge huge issue so we have to look at that as well um, medication compliance another one another big big issue that we have to to pay attention to um, and especially with this population and then judgment and no one likes to hear this but we do have to look at a person's judgment okay again what would they do in the event of emergency are they cooking and leaving pans on the stove and burning them up okay now there happens to be another uh, um, like a connection with the PERS system where it's called cook stop and if there's not motion in front of the stove for five minutes it turns the stove off so there are adaptive things out there that can help people you know that that maybe that might be this a small problem that they are experiencing small problem but it could be a large problem as you know um, finances are are they managing their finances all right okay were they very fastidious in paying their bills and now they're they're not paying their bills this is something we have to take a look at and maybe they could benefit from one of those accountants or CPAs that come in and, and work with people on on paying bills but you know maybe it's it's time for somebody with the power of attorney to take over handling the finances and we do have to make that call sometimes um, and we also have to really look at exploitation it, it is ripe and I don't know how it is in other communities but in Spokane we have come across it with probably 50 percent of the population that we serve in my just my my serve uh, my um, agency it's it's rampant out there they're selling people asphalt that they don't need they're they're, they're claiming to um, trim shrubs and trees that they have not done they they're calling in and making it sound like they need your bank account number because there's been some kind of foul up at the bank all these different kinds of things and we've seen people just taken to the to the cleaners um, and even sweepstakes you know that's a huge issue as well so and then one of the big hot button issues is driving okay we like our cars and we don't like to give that up but there comes a time when we have to look at the safety of those on, on the road and maybe crossing the road and and people above the independence of that individual so it's not always a very um, popular decision but sometimes we have to make that decision or contact the Department of Licensing if if a person is not willing to to give up their driving privileges Okay, because sometimes people don't have awareness they don't have the insight to recognize when they really should not be driving anymore okay and that's that holds true when they maybe shouldn't be in the home any longer okay all right so so when is it time to make that choice um, you know the safety issues are huge um, I think if you're if your doctor or your neurologist is saying to you you know how are things going at home I'm kind of concerned about how you're getting your activities of daily living met all right. If they're talking to you about that, then that's that's a, a yellow flag coming up. If there's falls, ongoing falls, and you know, hopefully you're not getting injured by them, but at some point you will be injured by them, and so we have to take take that into consideration. If there's multiple falls, then something needs to change. Either services need to be brought in, or maybe we need to look at a change. Is there a decline in health? Um, we you know when you have multiple problems as people age you start to have um, other systems that are um, are impacted and and then if there's proper not proper nutrition medication isn't in, in compliance then we got a triple whammy there and we have to to, to look at that and I, that's when I think that there probably needs to be a consideration of maybe an alternative live, alternative living option or help in the home also have there been multiple calls to 911 or to family members constant calls um, you know I need help I need you over here right now um, frequent hospitalizations as a result of falls or maybe medication non-compliance or confusion and then sometimes the cost of you know you can have care come into the home but sometimes that becomes excessive financially it's it's more expensive to have 24-hour care in the home than it is to go into a facility that's the unfortunate thing I wish it were the other way around but it's not so sometimes the cost can actually drive somebody go to go into a, a placement so but the, but one of the largest things is is your quality of life being compromised okay um, is it a struggle for you to perform your activities of daily living and and manage from day to day how much energy is it taking for you you know what what 
what is it worth to stay in your own home? Or where maybe if you had a little bit more assistance, you have people coming in, or you know, you're going to an adult family home or assisted living where they can provide that assistance and they can conserve your energy. Okay, because energy conservation is huge with this population. Is your mood declining? Is your family starting to see that you're withdrawing from other people or getting irritable? Okay, withdrawing from just all the social interaction. Maybe you were a social person at one point. All right. So, so those are some of the things that we have to look at when we're making recommendations for for people to to go into placement. Now, how do you choose it? How do you know what your level of functioning is? You know, what level of care is somebody going to be? Uh, what's necessary for a level of care decision? Um, if someone goes into an assisted living, they have to be safe behind closed doors. All right. That means that they have their apartment and they still have to be able to get themselves to meals. And you now, now medication can be administered to them, but they have to be able to manage to do their own toileting, transferring, and those types of things. Because if somebody needs assistance with their mobility and their toileting and um, all the activity, the basic activities of daily living, then they might be better suited for an adult family home. Okay, and an adult family home in Spokane or in Washington is a private home that has up to six residents in it. So it's a private home. So they, you have a bedroom, but you don't have an apartment. Okay, so that's the difference. So, so when we're looking at somebody that needs to go into placement, we'll look to see, you know, can they be managed safely in an assisted living, or do they need to have a little bit higher level of care in an adult family home? Okay. Um, one of the things to look at, too, is cost, of course. Um, if you're going to be transferring to state assistance or Medicaid in the state of Washington, then will that facility or that adult, adult family home accept Medicaid? Or how many years must you pay privately before that you can convert to Medicaid? So that's another issue that needs to be discussed. <coughs> and is there a continuum of care? If you're going into an assisted living, do they also have the independent living, the memory care, the assisted living, and, and the skilled nursing? Because if you do need skilled nursing, it might be a good option if there is a skilled nursing facility that is connected to um, the retirement community where the assisted living is. Right? Um, I would recommend touring, you know, what I call the dog and pony show. You go through, they, they show you all the amenities of their assisted living facility, and they're, and they're wonderful. They have you eat the meal, and it's all great. Um, but go back afterwards. You know, go unannounced and talk with some of the residents and, and look at um, how the residents are interacting with the staff and vice versa. Are, you know, are they responding to, I mean, do, is there eye contact? Is there is there a lot of involvement out in the community, or is everybody holed up in their room? Okay, so so visit and and then check and see if there's any violations, because well, that's one of the jobs that a care manager will do is make sure that there have been what in the state of Washington no enforcement letters, which means there's been some violations. Now some of them are pretty serious, but other ones you know might be a documentation error or something like that. But we look at that before we're going to refer out to to an adult family home or an assisted living, all right? So, but, and I, I'm going to stop right there. I, I see that I'm kind of at my mark, and so we'll, I'll let Frank take, take over, and we'll, then we'll take questions. Thank you. All right. Uh, thanks very much. Um, a lot of good information. I'm sure there's uh, questions out there that everybody has. Um, thank you for that. That was very informative, um, as I'm sure uh, people are asking those questions, you know, all the time. So uh, it's good to have a resource in the community to be able to do that. So as always, uh, remote sites. Uh, I will uh, call on you individually, and please do turn on your microphone uh, when I call on you, and also tell me how many are participating. And we'll start with our remote sites first. So let's uh, start in um, OMAC, Mid Valley, uh, folks. Any questions? And please tell me how many are in attendance. OMAC? <laughs> <laughs> okay, we can always come back to you, okay, if you have a question that comes up. Uh, Walla Walla, Providence, uh, St. Mary's. Don't forget to turn your mics on. Uh, no questions, and there's five. Thank you so much. 
Uh, Anchorage, Alaska, Providence Anchorage Medical Center. Yes, we're here. We have two people today, and we don't have any questions. Thank you so much. All right, thank you. Hopefully there's not too much snow yet. <laughs> we have a lot. <laughs> yeah, I bet you do. Uh, Billings, Montana, Deaconess Billings. Uh, there are seven of us, and we don't have any questions. All right, thank you so much. Uh, Tana uh, Tanaska, North Valley Hospital. Well, we don't have any questions. There are three head here. All right, very good. <laughs> you did such a good oh, job yeah, that nobody it. has any questions yet. Um, okay, uh, Ritzville, East Adams Rural Hospital. Okay, let's keep moving. You, we can always come back to you, okay? So speak up if you have a question. Uh, Clarkston, Tri-State Memorial. Good afternoon. We have 17 with us today and no Good questions. Morning. No questions? All right. Thank you, everybody, for uh, joining us. Uh, Coeur d'Alene, uh, Kootenai Medical Center. Hello. Yes. Uh, Coeur d'Alene's here. We have... Uh, 12. How many? 13. Thir we had 13. <laughs> Are there any questions? No, no questions for us today. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, let's go over to Pullman uh, Regional Hospital. Okay. Uh, how about uh, Pendleton, Oregon? Home of the Roundup. Yeah. Hello, we're here. We have six six people here. And a Wonderful. dog. And a dog. <laughs> Plus dog. Do I'll make a note of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he is a, yeah does the dog a sweet have any dog. questions? <laughs> dog. <does. laughs> um, and we do have a few questions. Okay. Please, uh, one, please go ahead. Okay. One was, um, how do we find a care manager like the nice lady in the rust-colored jacket there? I missed <laughs> the very first part, so I didn't hear get your name. Becky Tiller. And you're in okay. Pendleton? Yes. Okay. Uh, well, one, one of the ways I would go about um, is to maybe do a Google search on the Internet okay. for a geriatric care manager. Okay. But there might also be... Um, through your area agency on aging, and uh, again, there's a, an area agency on aging in every state. They're all named something different. Nice and okay. Um, but you might ask them to, or you know, sometimes physicians and elder law attorneys know of the resources out there. So that might be another thing uh, to uh, to inquire about. Okay. okay. All right. And another one on our list is where do we find the med timers? You can actually get those. Um, there's several different places. If you want to have one that is connected up with a personal emergency response system like Lifeline, they have them. Um, uh -huh. And also um, Response Link has them. But you can also buy them. They don't have to be connected up with a personal emergency response system. Um, if you go to the All Store for the Alzheimer's Association, alz.store.com, I believe okay. that's the um, address. Okay. They have a, and, and I know that that's, they're not the only ones, but they do have a dispenser that that you can order that is not connected to a personal emergency response system. Cool. And okay. a little less cost. Okay. And let's see. Oh, is there a state agency? We're in Oregon, of course, but mm -hmm. uh, is oh, we have eight people here now. <laughs> is there a state agency that um, would have? Uh, tell us if there had been any f violations in a care facility. Yeah, the, the facility actually should be forthcoming with them about with with you about that. But on, on the state of Washington, we can go online to get that information. Now I don't know how okay. Oregon is, but you could contact the whatever is akin to. We have the Department of Social and Health Services in Washington, and whatever the sure. state agency is, call them and ask them how you would find out if there had been violations. Okay. All righty. Yeah, I think I have one more. Um, Uh-oh. I didn't get the last word. How do we find out what's what? 
What is oh, that was your question, I Dale. That, Did that, we cover it already? I think okay. It. okay. All righty. Have we got it covered, everybody? Yep. Sounds good. Okay. Thank, Thank you so you. much. You bet. Thank you. Thank you, folks. And you guys are at the public library, I believe. So for those of you that aren't computer savvy, um, that have a library close, that's a, that's a great place to go to to have computer access or to ask for assistance as well. So uh, let's go to uh, Moses Lake Samaritan Healthcare, please. There are nine of us today, and we don't have any questions. All right. Thank, thank you. you so much. Uh, Miles City, Montana. Miles City, any questions? Yes. Uh, when should a person quit driving? <laughs> sure. Easy question. <laughs> um, that, is a, that is a very loaded question. And, and I think if anybody has any doubts as to whether or not um, they should be driving, go to your Department of Licensing and ask to be tested. Ask for a driver reassessment or a driver reevaluation. Um, you can also go through driving schools and that sort of thing. I know St. Luke's has uh, a, a program here where they assess people's driving skills. Um, but but when if you're if you're noticing that there are you know dings on the car, a lot of dings on the car. There's been traffic violations. There's been you know and maybe tickets that have not been paid and um, parking tickets. Um, you know they're not keeping their license up. Uh, they're not keeping their you know plate tabs up and that that sort of thing and they're just driving too slow driving too fast uh, not observing the the rules of the road but I, I would just for safety precautions maybe request a Department of Licensing evaluation and then it's an obje objective assessment yes and there's seven of us here today and you people have a happy Thanksgiving thank you you as well <laughs> thank you and, and uh, don't feel bad about the driving thing. My my wife says I should take a new class too. So, you know, so yeah, we'll talk. Okay, uh, let's go to uh, Colfax Whitman Hospital Medical Center. Oops, sorry, they're not with us. Sorry about that. Uh, Colville, Providence uh, Mount Carmel. This is Colville. We have six here today, and we also had the question about the um, automatic med dispenser, but we wanted to wanted to ask if there's a ballpark figure that um, maybe uh, Becky would know. Is it hundreds or thousands for one of those? Oh, well, you know, they, the, those that are connected with the personal emergency response system, usually what they're doing is they're linking the the, the string around your neck, you know, the, the push, the button uh, pendant to and the um, medication dispenser. And it's, I believe the last time I checked, it was about $100 a month. So generally the personal emergency response system is about $45 a month. So, you know, you're looking at about $45 thereabouts. Now you can get the ones that aren't automated I mean, that, that you can purchase and they're yours. And, um, uh, and I'm trying to remember how much those are, but that the one at the all store would tell you, um, they could tell you how much that was, but I don't think it was too costly. So did that answer your question? It did. Thank you. All right, thank you, folks. Uh, Dayton General Hospital. Uh, yes, we're here. I, I'm not sure whether you're receiving us or not. Yes. Okay, there's four of us, and we have no questions. All right, thank you for joining us. All right, let's go to uh, Kirkland, Washington, Evergreen Healthcare. Oh, Any questions, uh, Kirkland? Is that them? No, that's Okay. Okay. All right. We can always come back to you, so no problem. Uh, let's go to uh, Grangeville, Idaho. Grangeville, any questions out there? We have... Uh how did I say this? 10 in attendance? Is there 10? Yeah. I'm We've sorry, got can 10 you speak in up? attendance. Okay, this is Grangeville. 
Yes. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, we have ten. We have ten in attendance, and uh, we have some new people here, and we may have a couple questions here. Okay, Is please, uh, have, please go ahead. Anybody? Do you want to? How often do you, do you have to consult? Do you have to go up to them? Yeah, come, just come up here and talk. <laughs> we have a question here. Yeah, that would have. Uh, a <laughs> I'm newly this. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, newly diagnosed with Parkinson's, and um, I live uh, 186 miles from the specialist that I talked to in the Rockwood Clinic. Uh, how often do I have to meet with this guy in the next few years? I'm worried about the distance. Mm. It's a problem to get to Spokane and a problem to get back. Mm -hmm. It's expensive to stay overnight. We have um, dog care issues when we do go. Okay. Uh, I just wondered how much difficulty I'm going to have managing a chronic illness this far away from care. Sure. And I, I'm going to repeat if I, I want to make sure I understand the question. So, so one, you're asking how frequently you would have to be seen by your specialist in Spokane. Exactly. And you're 180 miles away? 186 one way. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, and. It, you know, that, that would be your provider that would probably have to tell you how frequently you would need to be seen. Um, but there might be something you could work out with the provider in being monitored by somebody that's closer in, maybe from one of your local providers, and then they can communicate with the specialist. I don't know if that's an option, but it might be something to ask them about. Well, local, uh, our local family physician uh, referred me to this specialist in, in uh, Rockwood Clinic that he has a lot of faith in. Okay. Uh, so that's where I went to, for the diagnosis. Okay. Uh, but I just wondered, uh, it's not clear to me how often I'm going to have to see him. Okay. And that's a fair question. I think that you can you can ask your, the specialist how often you need to be seen, or can this be managed through your, your local physician, family physician? It might be. I mean, if, the, if your physician is comfortable with it, or maybe he, would need to, he or she would need to consult with the specialist from time to time, there might not be a need for you to be seen, or maybe they'll want to see you once a year, you know, so that it's not well, quite that so that I could handle. Um, I was about to poll the people in the room to see what their experiences were. Okay. Uh, a lot of them probably have been dealing with this a lot longer than we have. Mm -hmm. Thank you. No, thank we you. We have one more, que one okay. more question. Okay. Hello. Yes. Uh, I've okay. recently uh, lost my parents, one to a stroke and one to uh, Alzheimer's, and it has come out. It has come to my attention through another source that uh, there is uh, new work being done on medium chain triglycerides that can uh, undo the effects of all these, no matter how far along they, all, they are. And the best source of these is coconut oil. And it's done wonderful things, and it's a 2011 book called Stop Alzheimer's. now by Bruce Fife. I wonder how far you've gotten along with this information to pass it along. I have not. That is new information for me and I really, that's it outside my so, scope. <laughs> it is so excellent. It okay. is so excellent. It's such an easy thing and many examples of people that cannot understand seeing a clock, then they take medium chain triglycerides, then they can draw the clock. There's Parkinson's <laughs> tests in here and it's undone and even saturated fats like Butter is actually good. It's things that we are not being told because of the the uh, medical profession. I realize not you, but you're compartmentalized. But there's a lot of things out there that can help people, mm -hmm. all us. Mm -hmm. But uh, we're not giving the given those options because uh, drugs can actually induce the trouble we're having. It might be something you'd like to look into. I will do that. Thank you very much. Okay. What do I do? Just talk. Okay. Hi. Yeah, I have a question. I'm an in-home caregiver, but I would like to further my education and perhaps as far as becoming a care manager. What is involved? Is that a four-year social services degree, or is, are there courses I could take online? Um, I don't know what's available online, but um, the the team that I have to put together, it, the minimum is a four-year degree, and that's a, okay. social, a degree in social work or nursing. Okay. Now, I have my ma master's degree, 
Okay. So, so I, I don't know that I would um, have anyone that <coughs> working for me from a clinical standpoint that would not have any, at, at the least, a uh, bachelor's level. Okay. Thank but you. But I'm speaking for my team. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And if it's true about uh, coconut oil, my favorite source of that is Mounds Bars. <laughs> Dark chocolate. I mean, oh, absolutely. You got your doesn't get any better than that, right? Yeah. <laughs> Be nice if we'll find out if that's really uh, true. Yeah, huh? yeah. All right. Interesting to find out. Might have to do our own clinical trial. Yeah. Um, okay. Thank you very much. Uh, let's see. Uh, Kennewick General Hospital. Any questions? And how many do you have with you today? Kennewick General? Oh. We have two people, and we have no questions. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, a couple of the uh, previous ones that did not answer. OMAC, Mid-Valley, are you folks there? Okay. All right, I think we've got it. Um, now let's go to our audience in Spokane. Folks, do you have any questions? Uh, for uh, Becky Tiller, please. Yes. Uh, you mentioned the healing device. I wish I would have brought my information. Actually, you could call me if you want. You've got my, some of my contact information. I could give you the name of the device. I don't recall. Diane, do you remember what the name of that is? Yeah. Yeah, there are different ones, but it was pretty impressive. I mean, they, they seriously have straps or a, a rack that rail that goes along the whole ceiling to whatever rooms that individual needs to be transferred, and and it's just a lot safer alternative, I think, from the perspective of the person being transferred. But if, if it's actually going through the bedroom to a bathroom. Yeah, yeah, they can adapt it that way. So, yeah, it, it's it's pretty pretty impressive. But if you would like to call me, I would certainly be happy. Anybody, if you have any questions afterwards, you can call me. My contact information is out there on the on the uh, desk. But um, if you need a specific name or name of a product or contact information, come. Okay, in the future. Okay, all right, absolutely. Okay, any other questions? So they know everything there is to know. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Becky, this is Mo in Colville. Can we ask a question? Certainly. <laughs> or tell you something else? We're the sure. ones that asked about the cost of the um, auto medication dispenser. Yes. So I ran into my office and went to the website, the alls.store.com, and oh, good. they have one for $150. Okay, thank you very, very much. Very reasonable. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you very much. So, yeah, I know that they're not the only ones that carry it. There might be some even local vendors around, but... That was the, the most recent place I've seen it, um, the one that's not connected to the PERS system. So, good. Thank you for doing that. Okay. There's all kinds of things that can be put together to, to keep people safe in their home. It's a matter of, you know, what kind of resources people have and what they're willing to spend on it, um, which can be a huge issue, what you have to spend on it. So, I mean, there's all kinds of things that can be done. It's This industry is exploding because our boomers are getting older and having and want to stay in their own homes for the most part. So, okay. All right, Becky. Oh, th question, I'm, oh sorry. I'm sorry. Please. <laughs> It, it significantly, it really is. Um, some of the the programs that have been operating off of grants, um, and you know, I'm thinking of respite programs, and even that, that program called Care Cars, you know, and and adult day health programs are always finding themselves on the cho chopping blocks and just hanging on by their fingernails. Um, so, yeah, it, it's really it is impacting the uh, the services that are available, that are state paid and federally paid. Yeah, yeah. Anybody else? Any more questions, Spokane? Uh, you mentioned the cost of that assessment, that initial assessment that you can have to do. Mm -hmm. uh, generally, how long does it take? And, like, or just a ballpark figure? Mm -hmm. uh, 
generally we're, we're in, into a person's home by, for a couple hours, maybe an hour and a half to two hours. And, and then it depends on if, we're, if we need to get medical information and that sort of thing and make uh, calls to some of the other maybe agencies involved or the families, physicians, that sort of thing. Generally, you can do an assessment in about three hours. Mm -hmm. That would be, uh, you're going to make me do math here, um, about less than $300, okay? Mm -hmm. Any other questions, Spokane? Okay, I'd like to thank Becky Tiller uh, so much for your time today. Um, now, uh, a couple things before we have her leave. Uh, you'll notice this directory was out there for seniors. Anything in particular you want to say about this, Becky? Well, and there, and, and then that, that alls um, dot store is in that book. There's a lot of great resources in this this book, and I know the outlying areas don't have them, but there, several of them, there are a directory f uh, for seniors in some of the outlying areas that at Lawton Printing puts out. This comes out every year. It's got a lot of good resources, good articles about like Medicaid eligibility. If you want to find out you know, how, how you might become eligible or when you might become eligible for Medicaid assistance. There's housing options in there. Um, there's providers out there that, and things about fraud and um, identity theft. And, you know, there's a bunch. I teach a class using that book <coughs> for four hours. There's that much information in it. Okay, so there's a lot of things. If you read that cover to cover, mm -hmm. you'd, you'd be really, really smart. <laughs> So great reference. Uh, there's, I see a number of you grabbed these already. There's more out front. Yeah, so you. feel free to grab those on the way out, okay? And, and you know, just be reminded that if you do have questions, uh, whether you're in a remote community or out here in Spokane or what have you, uh, you can always call your local pharmacist, your, your physician. Uh, you can call the colleges of pharmacy or nursing or, you know, they have social worker connections, all sorts of things. And certainly your local libraries are a great resource to Definitely. look for information, use computers, things of that nature. So don't be afraid to get out there and ask those questions. So, again, um, I'd like a little applause uh, for Becky Tiller. Thank you. Thank you. Um, a couple of announcements before we go. Our next telehealth is Monday, December the 12th, and it'll be uh, Dr. Darcy uh, Volweiler, who is a practicing uh, psychiatrist, I believe. Psychologist. 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 Okay. Okay, and so Tremble Clefts will also be uh, joining us and providing little holiday music, I'm sure. So if you haven't had a chance to listen to Trouble Clefts, they're fantastic. Uh, today's program uh, is uh, on DVD. You can uh, get a copy of that by calling the PRC. Uh, that's Parkinson's Resource Center. Or going to our website at www.spokaneparkinsons.org. And I'd like, again, thank you, everybody, uh, for making the drive. you have a question, sir? Uh, perhaps I missed an opportunity a few minutes ago. Uh, what is happening, if anything, on stem cell research? That is beyond my, my scope. That I don't know. I really don't know. I hope a lot, but that's my own bias. But I, I don't. I'd have to defer out on that one. I think that you guys would like a few years ago. Yeah, yeah. I think it. I think it's still going on. I think that there's been monies that have been allocated for it. But you, you might be a better person to answer that question. Well, not necessarily. <laughs> but, I mean, you're you're exactly right. There's been a lot of debate in Congress. Mm -hmm. uh, they've gone back and forth, uh, and it depends on uh, which president is in office. You know, these discussions have been going on for 20 plus years. Um, so that's something that we really need to get the experts in, and perhaps uh, we think about future topics. Yeah. Uh, we can talk about uh, something like what's new in the future, yeah. and so we can touch on that. So I'll, I wrote that down as a future topic so we can try to address things like that. Give you guys a uh, feel for what's, what's coming up, uh, because there are a lot of number of uh, big pharmaceutical companies who do have uh, Parkinson's drugs, Alzheimer's drugs mm -hmm. in particular as well in their pipeline in various stages of development, so more to come, okay? Thank All right. Thanks, everybody. Please drive safe. We know it's uh, getting close to being officially winter, yeah. so drive safely. Uh, God bless, and have a great day. Thank you.